Charlie's Theron is a spy. I mean, could that really be that bad? So the movie this week is Atomic Blonde, which is based on the 2012 graphic novel The Coldest City. Since I never read the graphic novel, I can't really compare and contrast, so I'm kind of just going to base it off of the opinion of the movie. Charlie's Theron's really been on a roll the last couple of years with these action movie roles between Mad Max Fury Road and the latest Fast and the Furious. And with David Leitch, who was one of the directors of the first John Wick movie, I mean, those two together, I mean, I mean, at least there's going to be a lot of action, but hopefully there's more than that. I mean, we'll see. This film focuses on Charlize Theron's character, Lorraine Broughton, who's this undercover agent for MI6 that's sent to Berlin during the time of the Cold War. Her main tasks, really, are just investigating this fellow agent's death, and she also has to recover this list that was stolen from him as well, due to the fact that the list is basically a record of all the different double agents in the agency. Going into this, I was definitely expecting a lot of action due to the fact that, you know, if you watch any trailer or TV spot for this movie, it's filled with action and looks awesome. And, you know, especially add, add in the fact that the director was one of the directors for the first John Wick movie. But, I mean, the action for the most part just I thought was decent. Don't get me wrong, none of the action's bad at all. But, I mean, in this genre, it's just more of the same if you've seen any John Wick, you know, Jason Bourne or any James Bond movie. It's just like that. Just this time, it's a female kicking all the asses, which I'm okay with, you know, as long as they do it right. Charlie's Throne is definitely a badass in this movie, I have to admit. And there's this one scene in particular towards the end that's like a really long, brutal, grueling action scene in this stairwell, and it goes on for a while, and they're just beating... She's beating the shit out of people. She's getting the shit beaten out of her. You know, it's long scenes, like no cuts, really, and it just goes on for forever, and it's awesome. I have to admit, that's probably my favorite action scene of the whole movie. Some of the style choices were hit and miss because I thought all the neon colors, you know, it's very 80s, it's very cool. I like that, and I like some of the soundtrack, but some of the songs they play, you know, especially with the way that they're played. Like, sometimes it's cool, and then sometimes it kind of just ruins the whole mood of the scene. Because it's kind of like the way with Suicide Squad, using all the music, and it just, I just didn't like it that much. The story for this movie isn't really that new either. I mean, it's a standard spy movie concept. You know, there's something valuable that... A bunch of different parties obviously want because they can use it in very different ways depending on who has it. So somebody has to go undercover and you know there's double agents. I mean it's been done before. I mean it's not like new. The way the movie's written is also kind of jumpy because it literally jumps back and forth all the time because you know Charles Thrones in the interrogation room talking with John Goodman and Toby Jones. So that's obviously set in the present. And then they got to go tell her story because she's telling it to them. Then they always cut back to them in the interrogation room, you know, talking a little bit more. And then they cut back to the past story that we're trying to follow. And with the spy plot in there, you know, sometimes it can get kind of confusing. And I feel like that's kind of a bad thing. I know it wasn't just me because I wasn't the only one that called this in the audience. Like, it's really predictable in some parts. Like, as long as you pay attention, like, you're going to know who the double agent is. Like, there's not really, like, twists. It's not, like, that hard to figure out, as long as you use your brain. Plus, you know, no matter what, Charlize Theron makes it out alive due to the fact that she's doing these interrogation scenes explaining the whole movie to us. So, I mean, there's not really that, like, you know, if, is she going to die? Is she not going to die? I mean, because she obviously lives. I do have to give Charlize Theron credit, though, because she does a really good job in this movie. And she also works really well with James McAvoy's character, who sometimes I really liked, even though he is kind of a scumbag sometimes. But, and you can kind of tell he usually had his own motivations in the movie. And it's unfortunate, but Sophie Patel's character is so wasted in this movie. Is this, like, inexperienced, naive French operative that almost adds nothing to the plot besides, like, a brief love interest. Like, she could have been written out of the movie completely and it wouldn't have really changed anything as far as, like, the actual plot goes. And, uh, John Goodman, Toby Jones, and Bill Skarsgård are all fine in this movie. But, I mean, they're not really given too much, to, you know, to work with in the story because they're not the main focus. So they just appear off and on throughout. But anyway, to get to my score for the movie... I'd have to give Atomic Blonde a C. Even though the whole story aspect of this movie isn't the greatest and it's nothing innovative or new, I mean, a lot of the action scenes are pretty fun. Charlize Theron and James McAvoy give really good performances. And if you like action, I definitely think you could at least enjoy it a little bit. But anyway, thanks for checking out my video for Atomic Blonde. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.